With so much having going on in the NFL over the past 48 hours, it's easy to let the game against the Colts kind of slip under the cracks a bit, but we ain't forget about it. And in this video, we're going to talk about how we think the game is going to go. The good, the bad, the ugly, the pretty, and everything in between. Let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on welcome to week five and it's crazy that we were just having conversations about different players that the Ravens could acquire different players that the Ravens could draft and, and now we're already in week five of the regular season time be moving so fast man uh, but before we get into this video where we're going to talk about the Colts game on Monday night football another primetime game for the Ravens hey no complaints about that even though I really enjoyed the one o'clock and the 430 games. I, I really did, man. Uh, but anyway, um, before we get into that, I got to give a special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, appreciate y'all. Uh, and just everybody in Team Keep It Clean. Thank you. Uh, special shout out to the patrons. Uh, if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't, you ain't got to go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. You can stay right where you at. Just chill. Just vibe. It ain't nothing. But either way, I, I love y'all and I really do appreciate y'all. Uh, just rocking with the channel. Now, Colts, Ravens, Monday Night Football from M&T Bank Stadium because that's that's a kicker right there. Because you know, if, if y'all been watching Ravens for a little while, you know when it comes to Monday Night Football games, they get them now. They get them, but they don't be at the crib too often. But anyway, so it's nice to have this. I know they had one last year, of course, against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, but we don't want to talk about that game. We want to talk about this year's game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But anyway, Colts. All right, so this game, the Colts, they are coming in at one and three, and the Ravens have the exact opposite record of three and one. Now, um, when I was watching that Colts and Dolphins game the other day, when they won, it was kind of bittersweet for me because y'all know we down here in Miami. Um, so, I, and, I, and I got love for the Dolphins. A lot of my family, they're Dolphins fans because they're originally from Miami. Um, but I was like, ah, I want to see the Dolphins win. But then at the same time, I was like, but the Colts, I, I want them to get that first win off their back. Because if, if they get that first win off their back, then when they come into M&T Bank Stadium, then it'll be like, okay, it'll be less pressure on them so they can take it a bit easier. And I mean, it could work in two ways. It could work like that, or it could work to where they like, oh, okay, we got a win against the Dolphins. You know what? Let's go get another win. Uh, but either way, I, I am glad they got that first win off their back because... Had they not won, then they would have been sitting at 0-4. And 0-4 is a lot to come back from because it is a very short season. Even with it being a game longer, it's still a very short season, and it goes by like that. And to come back from that sort of record deficit would be a lot for Indianapolis. So a team that could possibly, and of course it wouldn't be technically, but a team that could possibly not have anything to play for, those are the most dangerous teams in the league to play against because they are not afraid to pull out all the stops. They're not afraid to try any of these crazy plays. They're not afraid to go for it on any fourth down. They, they are super aggressive and they play super crazy. So it could throw you off guard. Uh, but anyway, in this game, um, tackling for the Ravens defense, it has to be better. Why? Because you're going up against uh, one of the better young running backs in the league. Uh, I know there used to be a lot of back and forth between who is better. No Colts fans and Ravens fans went back and forth. Oh, Jonathan Taylor. Oh, J.K. Dobbins. Jonathan Taylor, J.K. Dobbins. And it's a shame that we can't see these two go head to head this year. Uh, but Jonathan Taylor, he's nice, man. We knew he was nice. Ravens got to see him up clo close and personal last year. Um, but the, the tackling in this game, it has to be good because you don't want him or you don't want them because they got Hines, too. You don't want their running backs breaking off big games because – as opposed to Melvin Gordon, these running backs, in my opinion, have a better element of speed. So if they break a big one, they could take it to the house. And that's exactly what you don't want, don't need, and you can't have. So it's important that the Ravens obviously stop the run game, but it's important that the Ravens tackle well. And last week, it was getting a little scary. It was looking like a big yikes because it was looking like the Ravens were going to have a bad day tackling. But they let all the bad tackling out on that one drive. They let it all out on that one drive where they gave up a touchdown. Then after that, 
they tightened up in a major way. So that's the Ravens that we want to see moving forward. The ones that tighten up. Another thing, too, um, just speaking of defense, just general defense, we we'll wink the adjustments. Keep them up, please. And you don't have to, as we saw last week, even though they did lose their quarterback, so I'm sure that changed a lot, too. But like we saw last week, you don't have to wait till the second half to make adjustments. You can do it right away. Because the Broncos, they got that one drive. And that was it. That was the only one that they got. That was it. And then they got the one at the very, very end of the game when it was out of reach. Uh, but besides that, they were not moving the ball like that. They would get a first down here and there, but that defense was holding it down. So that's what we need them to continue uh, to do. Marlon Humphrey. Now let's get into players specifically. Marlon Humphrey. Um, who is their guy at wide receiver for the Colts? They got Michael Pittman Jr. They got Pascal. Um, they don't have T.Y. Hilton right now. So I, I feel like they don't have that guy for them at the wide receiver position. And I was just talking to uh, my guy from uh, No Horse and Around podcast a couple of days ago, and he was saying that we just we don't have that, that deep threat at the wide receiver position. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. That gives an advantage to the Ravens, um, especially if, uh, depending on their safety position, depending on who's playing and who's not playing, because I'm not sure as of right now, because the date right now is Thursday. It's 9.15 a.m. on Thursday. So we haven't gotten to see if Deshaun Elliott is practicing or not yet. Um, so, but anyway, um, they don't, with them not having a deep threat like that, that helps the Ravens because that can keep the game to an underneath sort of game. Um, and that cornerbacks like Marlon Humphrey, physical cornerback, cornerbacks like Anthony Averett, physical cornerback, they can press on those wide receivers and not have to worry about somebody taking it over top. So that, that benefits the Ravens in a big way because uh, you know, um, with the, the Ravens cornerbacks, the, they, well, Marlon Humphrey, sometimes he struggles with, with the deep ball. He struggles with locating it sometimes. As we've seen this season, um, Anthony Avery, that was his struggle, but he's turned it around a lot. Uh, so, but if, if they don't, if they're not even throwing any deep ball, I mean, you know, they're going to throw some. But if those can be limited, then that just, it plays in our favor so much. Um, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen, who has been under a lot of criticism uh, from Ravens fans uh, because of the missed tackles, because uh, there have been a lot of missed tackles. And as I think with Patrick Queen, the missed tackles get highlighted that much more because he is an inside linebacker. Uh, so, you know, as an inside linebacker, there's going to be a lot of play coming your way. And, you, you know, you're going to be making a lot of tackles. He's expected to lead the team in tackles. That's what inside linebackers do. Um, but the, the missed tackles has been a thing. Him getting pushed back uh, has been a thing. Um, so with well, Patrick Queen, it's just going to be another week to just try to show some improvement in that area. Patrick Queen is still a good player, still can make some plays, still does make some plays, um, but we just, we just want to see that consistency continue to build up. Uh, so wrap up, the wrap up tackling, um, and if you can't bring somebody down, again, you get him a big hug and you tell them, hey, I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you trying to run on us, but I got to stop you here. I can't bring you down, but I'm going to wait for my boys them to come so they can take you down. So that's that's all you got to do, man. Um, but this game, I feel like with this game, with the running backs, Patrick Queen, his game is going to be important because he brings that element of speed. And I feel like they got to match speed for speed. Um, also, another thing, too. Ravens, they haven't gotten burned on it in the, well, at least against the Broncos, against the, the, the Lions they did. But the screen game, please, the, the screen game, watch out for it. Because, again, with these running backs, they got that element of speed. And with Hines, I think his name is Naeem Hines. I know I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but I know they use him as a returner. So those return guys, they're shifty. And you give them a screen and you get them the right blocking. It's to the house, and we don't want them going to the house at all. We want them going home upset after the game, but we don't go want them going to the house during the game because that, that wouldn't be a good thing. Um, so, yeah, with defense, they just got to be on point. Adafe away. Adafe, man, that dude has been doing his thing, man. Impact player, rookie player. He said it uh, yesterday. He said, I don't want to be no, labeled no pass rusher. I don't want to be just a pass rushing specialist. No. And, okay, well, you ain't got to be just that. You could just be a baller, and that's fine. We'd be cool with that. 
and he he's been making his mark in this league. So this will be a nice game to continue that. Justin Houston, I'm sure this game is a little bit personal for him since he used to play for the Colts, and that was the last, that was the team that he'd been playing for for the past couple of years, and they apparently had wanted him back. Uh, but he turned them down. He turned down more money from the Steelers to come join the Ravens. Uh, and it says a lot. That says a lot about the Ravens. That says a lot about him. Uh, and that says a lot about just how he views this organization. So that that was a beautiful thing to hear. And um, he's, he's, been, he's been making his mark, too. Um, so Justin Houston, I'm sure he's going to have a little extra burst to his step uh, in this game and, and attempting to sack uh, one Carson Wentz. Uh, the interior of the defensive line, Calais Campbell, uh, Brandon Williams, um, it's, it's important that they just, they clog that thing up, man. Especially Brandon Williams, that's what he's there for, that's what he does. And he does a phenomenal job of it. But it's important that they, they clog up the middle, again, to stop that run game. Because I, I really feel like if, if Ravens could stop that run game and stop it early, and then of course on offense, they put up points, which we're going to talk about offense in a bit, but I, I feel like this game, it has the potential for Ravens to just really take off. Because, again, with the Colts really not having that deep threat guy at, at wide receiver, and not that you can't uh, still create some deep threat plays, but if you have more so underneath guys and, and these physical wide receivers who ain't deep threat receivers, then that could really uh, – it could play in your favor, man. As far as the – it could play in their favor if they force the Colts to just – have to get past happy and early on. So hopefully that's what ends up happening. Matt Abike, man, Matt Abike, we've been so proud of him. We've been so proud of him because he's been making some noise. And this is his second year. Uh, He's he going to be something, man. He is going to be something because when you think of Matt Abike, word that comes to my mind is just disruptive. Disruptive. That's him all day, every day. Uh, so we hope that that continues. Um... Jimmy Smith, who has been an unsung hero, because ever since Jimmy Smith's come back, and while the level of competition at tight end has gone down now, it has gone down, but still, Jimmy Smith, his impact on that has been big. Because, I mean, no matter who the tight end is, man, if they can get going, they can get going. So whether it's against a great tight end, whether it's against a not-so-great tight end, you still got to try to shut them down. And since Jimmy Smith's been back, the tight ends, they have not been feasting like they were <laughs> the first two weeks. Ooh. And them boys feasted. Oh, ugh. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that, that, that's the defense, man. Uh, they know what they need to do. We know what they need to do, especially against these Colts. Now it's a matter of getting it done. Special teams, Justin Tucker, Sam Cook, I mean, Nick Moore. <laughs> we ain't even got to talk about y'all. Make the field goals. Hopefully Sam Cook doesn't have to punt at all. Now, we don't want there to be turnovers, but hopefully he doesn't have to punt at all because that would mean the Ravens are just scoring like crazy. But um, Devin DuVernay. Devin DuVernay, uh, somebody somebody in the comment section said it. I forgot who it was, so my apologies, but shout out to you. They were like, man, with Devin DuVernay, they were like, it's like we, we don't want him to make a big mistake in the game, but every time that he makes a big mistake in the game, he makes up for it in a huge way. So they, they were like, we almost kind of want him to make a mistake because we know that he's going to make up for it like right away. And he's been doing that. He's been doing that. So Because Devin DuVernay in, in this last game against the Broncos, he called for a fair catch like on a five or six yard line. It wasn't a good decision. But then a couple of punt returns later, this dude got a big punt right before halftime. He got that big punt return right before halftime that set the Ravens up and they kicked the field goal uh, right before halftime. There was a game, uh, I forget whether, I think it was against the Lions, where he fumbled the ball. Now, it did get called back because of the penalty. Uh, but then on the, the very next, the, 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 the punt return, right after that, he ended up getting a really nice punt return, a really, really good one. Uh, and then there was the, I want to say it was the, was it the Chiefs game? I forget. I think it was the Chiefs game. Um, but where Devin Duvernay caught, he, he, I forgot what he did, but he, then he ended up catching a touchdown. He ended up catching the touchdown in the back of the end zone. Uh, and then there was the, uh, well, it wasn't his mistake, but it was Tyson Williams' mistake where he uh, ran the ball, was on the goal line, and he fumbled on the goal line. What did Devin Duvernay do? He ended up being right place, right time, caught it, and whew, because that could have been really bad. So shout out to Devin Duvernay. De Devin Duvernay has been 
I was, I, I, so far through the first four games, I call him Mr. Cleanup because that's exactly what he's been doing. He's been cleaning up Ravens' mistakes uh, and his own mistakes, <laughs> but he's been Mr. Cleanup. So shout out to him. Um, he, every time I think, like, uh-oh, John Harbaugh getting ready to pull him from punt return. Well, yeah, that, that's it. He ain't returning no more punts no more. He makes up for it like, right away. And then it's like, oh, okay, yeah, he get another chance. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for Dude, man. And it's nice to see him get involved a little bit more in offense, too. And now, speaking of offense, let's transition to the offense because this offense is crazy. I was just talking to my guy Josh about it the other day. And he was saying that the times right now are so weird because us as Ravens fans, we could possibly be hearing, oh, how is this team that the Ravens are going to play next? How are they going to stop the Ravens? passing game and just saying that out loud and hearing that is weird and if if you're a Ravens fan of old if you're a Ravens fan that's new it would be weird either way because when have you ever under Lamar Jackson under Joe Flacco even under any of the quarterbacks that came before Kyle Ball or Steve McNair the long list, when have you ever heard about somebody that they're going to have to stop Ravens passing game? Not even in the in the playoff run in 2012 did, were they saying that. So it's that's just a thing. That's, that, that sound is a sound of beauty. Now, with the offense, this is a chance for the offense. And again, Colts, Colts, don't take any offense because it ain't got nothing to do with you. Nothing. But this could be a game, or this would be the game, because it has to be, because it can't go past this. This is the game where the Ravens have the opportunity to break the rushing record for most games in a row with over 100 rushing yards. You know what's going to be in the back of their minds. You know they're going to be thinking about it, and you know they're going to try to get it. Colts, it is nothing against you. Please don't take it as anything against you. It's not. Shout out to Vic Angrio. Anyway, Lamar Jackson in this game. How about we 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 run it back from last week to where we play mistake free football? Now, um, somebody in the comment section they said, uh, cause cause I talked about how Lamar throughout the entire game he made great decisions, but I said except there was one where I didn't like it, where he threw in the traffic. Sammy Watkins he he caught well he almost caught it, but then. Uh, I think it was Stearns. Stearns, the Broncos safety. Stearns or Simmons, one of those two. Both of them great safeties, by the way. One of them knocked it out of uh, Sammy Watkins' hands. So they did. Sammy Watkins made a great play on the ball, but the safety made an even greater play on the ball in completion. And I just felt like that was a bad decision. It was all that traffic. But somebody corrected me in the comment section. They were like, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now, I got to disagree with you with you saying that's a bad decision. They were like, hey, it, yeah, it was a risk, but Lamar put it where it needed to be. And Sammy Watkins just got to come down with it. It wasn't even, it wasn't close to being an interception. It wasn't almost picked off or anything like that. And it wasn't. So I, I had to agree because it wasn't. Um, so, it, yeah, it was a risky throw, but the, the risk paid off right there. Well, it, it could have because uh, if Sammy Watkins would have just came down with it, then it would have been a crazy major play. Um, but shout out to Lamar for just the Hollywood called him precise. That's the, the word he used to describe Lamar Jackson. He called him precise. And, uh, okay, yes, I agree with that, Hollywood. He has been pretty precise. Uh, his decision-making has been good for the most part. Um, and he just, he's he been, he been doing his thing. Uh, of course, over the past couple of games, uh, the passing yards have went up. Um, and he and this Ravens offense have shown, like, okay, you slow down the run, we got something for you. We still got something for you. So we hope that Lamar will continue that. And something that played a big role in the game last week for the Ravens overall, which I think made a huge difference, and we talked about it too. I said the, the first game that they do that, they're going to win by double digits, and it, it happened. They didn't turn the ball over at all, and that's so important. They did not turn the ball over at all. And when you don't turn the ball over, that usually plays uh, in your team's favor. So that was great. And then they forced the, the Broncos to turn over, even though it came at the very end of the game. Uh, they, they, the Broncos turned it over. I mean, that turnover wouldn't have made a difference in the outcome, but it still happened. 
Um, so Lamar just continue doing your thing. Hopefully his back ain't too sore. I know some people felt like he wasn't as explosive as a runner that he normally is. Maybe he was dealing with that sore back. And hey, who knows? That that, that could have been the case. Um, but I think that back, if his back was sore going into the game, then definitely coming out of it, it was even more sore because then Broncos were taking them cheap shots. Them cheap shots. I was like, oh, Broncos, what, what are y'all doing? Um, but he, uh, I, I expect him to continue, man. Continue doing what he's been doing. And then another thing that's been nice with Lamar, too, is that he's been getting different guys involved, too. Because all this offseason, there was all this talk about Prochet this, Prochet that. Oh, Prochet's doing this thing. Prochet this. He's going to make the roster. Oh, Prochet, he, does he deserve to be a starter? Oh, does Prochet, da, 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 da. Prochet this and Prochet that. But there were people that were like, hold up now. Training camp is cool. Preseason is even cooler. But let's see it in the regular season. And Prochet, through the first three weeks, he had got a couple catches here and there. But it wasn't nothing crazy. But in the game against the Broncos, Prochet got to show who Prochet is. And it was nice to see him get involved. Now, it's not going to be like that every game. Every game is not, for every game, not every receiver is going to be involved. We know that. But it's nice that you can go to your arsenal. You can go to that backup. And it's like, oh, okay, they got some reliable hands. Let's get it. Duvernay even caught a catch, and of course, Hollywood and Sammy Watkins, we expect them to continue to do what they've been doing. Hollywood, literally all season long, he has been open. All season long. He has been wide open, and we love it. So, Sammy Watkins has just been a huge part of that. Now, from both of those two, the drops, let's cut them out. Hollywood last game, you know, two games ago, he had a terrible game. Had a huge bounce back game against the uh, the Broncos this week. Uh, Sammy Watkins, he hasn't been putting up crazy numbers, but he's been making some great veteran plays. Every week he makes some great veteran plays. Continue that. Let's cut the drops out, though, because every week he has some drops. So let's cut those out. But he's he been making some nice plays, man. Uh, Mark Andrews, because this, I feel like this, it's weird because it, it feels like every Ravens game this year is a big game. It really does. Well, I mean, they and they technically are because they're they against all these AFC opponents. I mean, besides the Lions. But it's been feeling like, I don't know if y'all got that same feeling, but I, it's been feeling like every Ravens game is a big game. Every one. Um, so this game, Mark Andrews, come through, big dog. Come through. You've been making some nice plays over the past couple of weeks. Keep that streak going, my friend. Keep it going. Because he started to wake up uh, in the Chiefs game and in the Raiders game. He's a little bit quiet. A little bit quiet. I know Lamar did miss him on the deep ball, though. But in the, in, the, in the Raiders game, he was a little bit quiet. Then he had that big drop with Jonathan Abram, just Mark Andrews. Lamar put it on the money. Mark Andrews said, mm, Jonathan Abram said, Arr. and then we all said, Arr. but in the Chiefs game, he woke up. And he started coming through. Then against the Lions, did the same thing against the Broncos. He had a good game, too, but let, let, let's keep it moving, Mark. Big money, Mark. Money bag, Mark. Whatever you want to call him, man. Um, so, shout out to Mark Andrews. Offensive line, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Bradley Bozeman, you, you have been uh, graded. I think he has a, a 100% win rate when it comes to the pass and when it comes to run blocking. Wow. So, keep that up. And also, let's make sure... Uh, that that guy, DeForest Buckner, yeah, he's pretty good. So Bradley Bozeman, you do nothing but keep it up. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody who um, I've been extremely surprised with, and again, initially when he was moved to this position, I was scared. I'm like, man, this guy's smaller. He got these short arms. He ain't going to be able to do that. He ain't going to be able to play no tackle, no. Patrick McCarry, I owe you a huge apology. You have been proving me wrong, and I have. I am so glad to be wrong. So glad to be wrong on stuff like this. I love it. I love it. Patrick McCarry has been doing such a phenomenal job. Such a phenomenal job. And he's been going up against some studs. And like even last week, all Von Miller had, I think, was a QB hit. And that was it? Like, that's it? Like, man. Pat so this offensive line, another week, another opportunity to jail, another opportunity to click. So hopefully they get things rolling. Because they've been they've been up and down. 
Last week in pass blocking, up and down. Uh, last week in run blocking, down, down, and up. It was like that. Um, so hopefully this week, this can be a bounce back week for them because they could definitely use it. They could definitely use it, like big time. One of the last, but not least, my boy, my Twitter profile picture, Giro, Greg Roman. Greg, going into this season, there was a lot of question about Greg Roman. A lot of us felt like he was not necessarily on the hot seat, but again, that them cheeks were getting sweaty. They were getting sweaty because of what the Ravens did and who they brought in. That really puts the pressure on Greg Roman because if, if you're doing your job, but your boss is like, you know what? We're going to bring in these guys that specialize in this area. And that area is somewhere where you have not specialized in your job. That, that, that's, that's pressure right there. That's pressure. So when they brought in Kiki and they went in, when they brought in TT, that put pressure on Gigi. So he's been responding to it. And obviously you can see the impact of a Keith Williams and a T. Martin on this offense. It's been a big impact. It's been an immediate impact. And it's just paid dividends in a crazy, crazy, crazy way. So, uh, with that being said, Greg Roman, continue to do what you've been doing. And I love how Greg Roman has been adjusting. Team decide, oh, you know what? The, the opposing team, they decide, oh, you know what? We're going to take away the Ravens run game. These dudes ain't about to run all over us. Greg Roman like, oh, okay. Hold, wait a minute. I, I do got another play sheet over here. Yeah, we got some good passes over here. Oh, you know what? Let's use that this time. Over the past couple of years, I don't know if they've been using it, but they were like, "This year, let, let's use it now," and we, we we love it, man. Greg Roman has been doing his thing, so keep that up. Let's continue, uh, and again, just hopefully the team just plays a, a, a complete game, offense, defense, special team. All three phases of the game have a positive impact, and they just really just take it to these Colts on Monday Night Football at the crib. Um, I do expect the Ravens to win. Uh, I expect them to win, uh, I think I said 30, either 34, 34, 14 or 34, 17, one of those two. Um, but I, I expect them to win uh, convincingly, decisively. Um, I just expect them to take care of business. This Colts team is definitely, um, they suffer and it is any given Sunday, in this case, any given Monday. So you just never know. Um, but I, I do expect them to take care of business. Uh, so... Colts going to bring it, though, because Colts, they, they are fighting for their season. They are fighting for it. Because uh, if you drop to one and four, it's like, ooh, you start, you start looking around at people. And, ooh, 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 funny eyes. Man. You're like, ooh. Uh, so we'll see how this thing goes. Anyway, I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Uh, I appreciate y'all. And we out.